what is the concept of frequency domain remember that we said that a complex number is given by an order pair of real numbers in i and q plane similarly when this complex number starts rotating in an anti clockwise direction this gives us a complex sinusoid which like the complex number has two components an i and q component but instead of sin theta and cos theta we have sin 2 pi ft and cos 2 pi ft this complex sinusoid is the basic building block of our signals and the, its frequency actually defines one tick in frequency domain so for example here time period is given by 1 over f and this is the f which comes here negative sign comes because of the direction of rotation which is clockwise in this case for this complex sinusoid we would have an impulse in the positive frequency axis a single impulse implies a complex sinusoid with that frequency clearly if we add another complex sinusoid with counter clock or anti clockwise rota rotation with the one which is rotating clockwise the signal on the q axis cancels out and the signal on i axis adds up this is why we say that a cosine in time domain is given by two impulses in frequency domain this impulse comes from the complex sinusoid rotating in a clockwise manner and this impulse comes from the complex sinusoid rotating in an anti clockwise manner in this flow graph we introduce the frequency domain i will explain each and every block in sufficient detail the blocks which are shaded are disabled and disabled and we can also have the option of hiding them but i will use them later in the video so i will just keep them here the title author just like we did before and my method of making the flow graphs is that i keep all the variables on the top so they are like remain separated from the program some people what they choose to keep each variable where it is being used like this but i do not prefer this now the nfft is the fft size which is the discrete fourier transform efficient way to implement discrete fourier transform and we have just chosen the sample rate as 30 2 these are the variables i am going to use in the program i have also chosen to import the value of pi now the signal source has a data type of float as we really have in here and that waveform is cosine the frequency is only 2 hertz this is because my sample rate you remember is just 32 there is a specific reason i will show you why a throttle block is required because if you recall the last program we had we had a hardware involved that is the audio sync which was dictating the flow of samples when there is no such hardware involved uh, running the flow graph tends to dominate the cpu cycles so it is better to in introduce a throttle block which basically uh, prevents that problem usually a sample rate is used in throttle block but since i am using my sample rate as 32 to show something specific i am choosing to run the throttle block at 8000 hertz a block from float to complex is required because the fft works on complex samples that is why there are type conversions involved if we do not give any input to the imaginary input it just treats as zero so after converting from float to complex we make it a vector of 32 samples num item should have been nfft and nfft now the stream is converted into a vector and it is given as an input to the fft block the fft block i've chosen to run it on complex uh, because if i run it as float there is no shift option available later we will i will tell you what this means but forward if fft is fft and the reverse is inverse fast fourier transform the rectangular window here i am choosing instead of default black man 
Harris window because I want to see the actual FFT output. You have seen in the lecture and read in the book, the FFT is the fast, efficient way of implementing the DFT. And a rectangular window implies that we are not applying any window to the actual input samples. With these options done, we again convert from the stream to vec uh, from the vector FFT ve uh, output vector to stream and then give it to as an input to the time sync. Now I want you to not confuse here because this time sync says sinusoid, which is actually uh, uh, when I will run the flow graph will show me the actual waveform. This will actually show me the spectrum. Why did I not choose to go through? Uh, frequency sync route because we will do that later but right now the purpose is to explain the frequency domain and for explaining frequency domain we should know what each and every sample in frequency domain means this frequency sync actually is the magnitude squared it's the energy spectral density of the signal so this is uh, why i am choosing to draw the spectrum through the time sync and let us see what the output is so that you can be more clear on this thing as i said the first time sync is showing me the nice time domain samples and starting from the top it's a cosine waveform and as we have seen the spectrum of the cosine is actually two impulses in frequency domain this is point zero one two so remember what was the frequency was if we chose for our signal source 2 an impulse at plus 2 and impulse at minus 2 this is our frequency 0 and remember this is actually a time sync I'm just choosing to show the spectrum through the time sync so that I can demonstrate individual bins frequency bins to you if I had chosen the frequency sync it would have just given me a continuous energy spectral density let us change the frequency to something like 5 and see what it gives. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So plus 5, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. And in the time domain, you can see now there is something which is changing. Let me explain that to you in a minute in time domain. Now you can see why I chose input IVS complex because the shift, if it was not there, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and n minus 5. The 0, the DC frequency bin is not in the center, it is actually at the starting point, which is something I don't really recommend. So that's why I chose to go through this route. Otherwise, otherwise I could have directly chosen the FFT as the, uh, the float and given the input from here. Now coming back to the time domain waveform, let us choose the frequency as 1 and see how many samples are there in one cycle. Either we can count it and or we can see how many samples I chose to display. I just chose to display NFFT which is 32 samples. I can say that a frequency of plus uh, 0, bin plus 1, bin minus 1 one cycle in 32 samples this is the concept of discrete frequency so we can say that the discrete frequency of this waveform is 1 over 32 cycles per sample let us change it to 3 and then you will see 1 2 3 3 cycles in 32 samples so the discrete frequency is 3 by 32 cycles per sample this is the most important relationship in digital signal processing which is basically f over fs equals k over n i have explained it in the lecture and i have explained this way in much detail in the book now there was something i did not discuss during the plotting let's run the flow graph and see the legend i samples it's a real sinusoid so i is in phase so there is no Im imaginary there is no q part 
In the spectrum, you can see that again the Q part is zero, although it is drawing it, it's a complex number, and the I part is two impulses. We can say that a cosine spectrum does not have a Q part if it is starting with the initial phase of zero. Now let us change this cosine to a sine waveform. See what happens. As we saw in the time domain, the waveform is now starting from zero, but in the frequency is one, you can still, still see one cycle in 32 samples. And second thing you see is that now the in-phase component is zero and the quadrature component is minus one at bin one and plus one at bin. I would rather not assign the amplitude, so I would say a negative impulse at bin plus one, a negative impulse at bin minus one. There is some specific relationship of the impulse amplitude, which we have discussed in detail in the book, and I think here the details are not necessary. Again, these impulses are the reason I chose to use a time sync to plot the frequency bins. Now we shift from the realm of real numbers to the realm of complex numbers. For this purpose, I select all and disable the blocks by either pressing D or disable. I will select the complex flow graph and I enable it. It's the same, exactly the same as before. Uh, the waveform is cosine, the frequency is three. The only difference is that instead of float, the data output type is complex throttle fft again exactly the same we discussed before and uh, there's a there's a time and frequency domain waveforms i will have these files uploaded so you can play with them and you can see what the options i have chosen for uh, the configuration and general settings now before running the flow graph i want to change the frequency to one for the, an ease of visualization what happens when we run it now so we can see that the, this is a complex waveform now where the in phase part is a cosine starting from the top and completing one cycle in 32 samples because the frequency was one and the quadrature part is a sine which is completing one cycle in 32 samples and starting with a zero Interestingly, these two waveforms in time domain now actually produce one impulse in frequency domain. And this is the actual concept of frequency domain. One impulse in frequency domain is actually a complex sinusoid in time domain. The reverse is also true. I know it will be difficult to imagine, but one impulse in time domain, one single impulse in time domain is a complex sinusoid in frequency domain we will see that later the frequency is one so this is point zero and single impulse at one if we had chosen the frequency as minus one then we have a single impulse at bin minus one and this is the concept of negative frequency no change in the cosine waveform but the sine waveform has change to negative sign we can say in a 3d plot that the wave the complex sinusoid is now rotating in a clockwise direction a negative frequency implies a clockwise direction 